Hi, it's Lucy and today I'm going to be doing a 24 hour reading vlog. So I've never done a 24 hour reading vlog, I think. I've done one 48 hour reading vlog so far and that's kind of it. Today I'm doing 24 hour reading vlog. It is currently 3.12 p.m. So I guess we'll start at like 3.15 ish. Hopefully this intro only takes three minutes and today slash tomorrow because it's 3.12 p.m. on Saturday. What day is it? March 27th. So from 3.15 today until Sunday at 3.15, I will be attempting to read. And since it's only 24 hours and I do have other things to do today other than read, I am attempting to read one and a half books. The books I will be attempting to read are Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. And if I have enough time after this is done, I will be reading Flamefall, also by Rosaria Munda. It's a sequel to this. This video is sponsored by Penguin Teen, who are the publishers of these books in honor of Flamefall, this, this sequel to Fireborn, coming out last week. So it is currently on shelves, available for purchase if you're interested. If you want to know what the series is about, I shall tell you. We follow two characters, Annie and Lee, who are born on kind of opposite ends of the track kind of thing, where Annie is part of a lowborn family. Sorry if you can hear a cat crying. It is not Tucker. You'll see who it is later in the vlog, but yes, I apologize for that. Annie was part of a lowborn family who was executed by Dragonfire, while Lee was born to the very aristocrats who used to rule over the city. Now, after a revolution that allows everyone, no matter who they're born to, to test into becoming a dragon rider, which is the governing class of the society. These two end up meeting because they grow up in the same orphanage and they both become rising stars in this new regime. And they are now rivals for the top position within the dragon rider fleet. Until everything changes when survivors of the old regime are found to have survived and they're starting their own little revolution. So now Lee must decide whether he must kill his old family and Annie must decide whether to protect her closest friend or become the champion her city needs. So this sounds very, very interesting to me. That's why I wanted to read it. Dragons, I feel like we don't see a lot of dragons in YA. The only one I can really think of is that really long book by Samantha Shannon, I think is the author's name. I'll, the cover's right here. That's the only one I can think of but this one is shorter. So I'm excited to see how dragons play a part into this. I'm excited to see how these two characters are shown in the story. I am just excited to see how everything goes. So yes, I will be attempting to read this book and obviously the sequel picks up where the first one left off, but I'm not gonna tell you the synopsis for the sequel because I don't wanna spoil the first book. I have kind of a lot to do today other than read these books. Also, I have to take care of my apartment. I feel like any vlog you've ever watched of me, I complain about how my apartment is messy and I just want you to know that it doesn't just stay messy, although it kind of does. I do clean it sometimes though. It just happens to be whenever I'm like, oh, I want to film a vlog, my apartment is also messy. I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, I also want to film a couple other videos, at least one other video and edit a video, edit this video. We'll just see where the world takes me. I also want to go outside today because it's really nice today. It's like 80 something degrees and it's still March, which I'm not really sure if that's normal for Atlanta. I've lived here for th three years almost three years and I just don't know what's normal because global warming but anyway I hopefully will take you on a little trip outside to the park so I can sit outside and read that'll be fun and nice I did not, in fact, tuck him in. He tucks in himself every day, multiple times a day. He loves to sleep under the covers and I love him. But yes, any I got a new cat. If you follow me on social media, then you already know about him. I've posted him on Twitter and Instagram already. But yeah, I just wanted to introduce the vlog to him. He will probably not make a lot of appearances in my videos because he likes to do this mostly. He's not like Tucker. Tucker loves to be in the middle of whatever I'm doing. He loves to be in everybody's business. Thor is fine minding his own business as long as he has to be under the covers. 
So yeah, just wanted to introduce, you might hear him sometimes because he loves to cry also. I got two cats who love to cry. Something about me, I think, calls to that, I guess. These are my cats. I have no idea what they're doing, but everyone needs to see them. Okay, back to me. I did, in fact, go to the park, and I did, in fact, ruin my book. It doesn't look as bad on camera, but I water damaged my book. It's very sad. I'm a little disappointed about it. Uh, a lot of disappointed. It was in my bag with my water bottle. My water bottle leaked, and now we have that. But otherwise, I am enjoying Fireborn. I am on chapter five. Yes, I'm on chapter five, which is about, I'm on page 110. There are how many pages? 432 pages, so I'm almost a quarter through. It's almost 9 p.m., or it is 9 p.m. So, timing-wise, I don't know how I'm doing, really. I don't know how late I'm gonna stay up to read this, but it is good so far. So like I said, when I mentioned the synopsis, we follow two main characters and we get to see their switch perspective. One thing I don't love about the formatting of this is that the chapters are kind of long and the chapters have different characters within them. So it just makes it feel longer. But I mean, other than that, it's like still good. And the beginning, we get to see them do this kind of like epic dragon fight kind of. So they're both training to be dragon riders. And in this tournament thing, they're like competing to one, show off their skills. And also they're competing to join the fourth order, which is like the head of the dragon riders, which would be the head of the society. So both Annie and Lee are at the top of their class, but Annie is more shy and withdrawn. So it's expected that she wouldn't want to be like part of this fourth order. And Lee is like a natural born leader because he was born into the original ruling class. Even though we learn early on that that is a secret, that is something that we hide, which I guess you could infer before reading the book because you would expect that people would not look fondly on someone from the regime that they overthrew. So we get to see that tournament. It was interesting to read about the dragons fighting, not really fighting. The dragons are more like horses in this, but people do have like a mental connection with their dragon that's shown off if that makes sense so like the dragon can feel their emotions but like they're like actually connected i think is how it seems and that's kind of the only magic we really see i don't really think there's a lot of magic dragons existing doesn't really make magic i think we're also kind of introduced to this new government new governing society the way that society has changed now that they old government has been overthrown which was overthrown on something called palace day which was essentially a massacre and the prologue talks about that, how the current head of the society saved Lee because he was with his father, who was like the old head of the society. And the like militia that was attacking the aristocrats got out of hand. I don't really know if a massacre is considered out of hand, but they weren't supposed to kill all the people that they killed, apparently. I don't remember what I was saying. I was very distracted by my cats. But what was I saying? Oh, yes, how the society has changed. So previously, it is kind of like how any caste system I think we know of worked. Basically whatever place you were born in is how you were regarded and determined your place in society and the new regime has instituted a test. We're sort of seeing how that may or may not be better, the negatives of the old society because Lee has a different view on it from when he was growing up with his you know, family that most people now regard as evil. We're getting to see his struggles with everything that's going on his struggles with how the test is kind of instituted. So now people are divided by like different metals. So the highest is gold. Lee notes that a lot of the people who test into gold somehow happen to be their families in the previous society were also part of the higher like noble class. So there's like questioning of that. And it seems like it's gonna be like kind of political and I'm really enjoying it. Tucker. Tucker. And I'm really enjoying it so far. So, so far we've gotten basically close to where the back cover says. We've seen Lee's old family or part of Lee's old family like show up as the synopsis says that they will. And we're kind of getting to see the aftermath of that, how the people are preparing because they think they're gonna have to go to war. And Lee's confliction about that's his family technically, but also he's part of the new society. You know, he's training to become one of the leaders. So he's conflicted. We get to see, we're getting to see more of that. And I'm excited to see where it goes. My cat is clearly begging for my attention right now. So I'm going to go play with him. 
and I will update you all when I'm further in. I think tonight I'm gonna try and get halfway through and then leave the other half for the morning. I'm here. I did it. I finished Fireborn by Rosaria Munda in 26 hours. Not quite 24, but you know, the point of these readathons isn't to be so semantical. That's not a word. Let's not get caught up in semantics, okay? You know, 24, 26, same thing. Um, but yes, I really, really enjoyed this. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. If you like political fantasies, then I think you'll really enjoy this. This also kind of reminded me of Dystopians, which I haven't read one of in a while, but it reminded me a little bit, kind of all the classic YA Dystopians, even though this is not technically Dystopian. Just because of the class system, I feel like a lot of Dystopians that we're familiar with have like a separation of people in various ways. So this kind of reminded me of that, but this kind of explores the idea of like how power corrupts or kind of how people can keep power, how power can be used, whether people can ever be treated truly fairly is kind of the idea, I guess. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly because they go from this society where they're basically a monarchy kind of. All of the rulers are based by on blood. It's passed down from generation to generation and then they move bloodily to a society where it's supposed to be based on merit, but we see early in the book certain characters who were born in certain families from the before times are ending up in higher positions based on the test. And we're kind of seeing kind of how in the real world, for example, like the college SATs we have in America, like where you're from, what your school did to prepare you for the test. Like you have to prepare for the test, but if you come from an area that doesn't focus so much on college readiness, you won't be as prepared as someone who has a private SAT tutor and someone who can afford to do that. So it's kind of a similar situation as that and also just, you know, nepotism in general. There's a character in here whose sister gets placed into a lower band because it's implied that she has dyslexia. Um, is that a merit thing? Like if she had had, you know, the proper tools, she might have placed higher on the test, but since, you know, they didn't know how to deal with dyslexia, they're like, oh, you have to do hard labor, basically. We get to see propaganda inside, which was very fascinating. It, just, it was jarring to hear like, oh, the Minister of Propaganda is doing this. Oh, we need to spit out propaganda that says this. Just because like all basically news that the government gives us is propaganda, but just to hear it so blatantly is very jarring. I really loved all the political machinations that was in here. I also really enjoyed seeing the evolution of Annie and Lee's friendship slash relationship kind of thing. It's kind of a friends to almost lovers kind of thing. It's hard to explain and I don't want to spoil it and you'll see, but it's kind of they want to, but they shouldn't kind of thing. But it was also like tertiary. Like I wouldn't even call it like a secondary component of the story. It didn't feel like it was taking over the story. Like definitely this things dealing with all the political turmoil they were dealing with, their place in their society were way more important. And sometimes they came together in that. And we also got to see like flashbacks of them growing up together and how they were involved in each other's lives when they were younger. And that was really nice to see. And yeah, I just really liked how it examines how even things that are better are not always good or are they even better? Like it makes you question that. And I really enjoyed that aspect of the story. So yeah, I think I'm gonna give it four stars. The only, not quite issue, but just something 
that I noticed I guess I would have preferred like a little bit more dragons I wanted to know a little bit more about like how dragons worked how they were involved in the society the only fantasy element like I mentioned before is the dragons there's no magic or anything and it just seems to be a little bit medieval because characters are referenced to be like serfs and things which reminds me of medieval things all we really know about dragons somehow they have a connection to the dragon rider because they choose the dragon rider but it's not really explained in any way it's not really discussed too much how that happens how people's connections to the dragons really were. I just would have liked to see more with the dragons as companions. We really only see them when they're like fighting. I kind of was hoping it would be like a Pokemon kind of thing where like the dragons were always around or not always around but they would be around more than when they just needed to fight kind of is what I was hoping for and that's not really the case although and there don't seem to be any like wild dragons or anything like that they're strictly in the military somehow they're somehow part of the society's military we don't even know really where the dragons came from we know that some societies don't have dragons because they got rid of all their dragons but we don't really know why they would do that uh, why this society has chosen to keep their dragons we don't know anything about that so i would have really liked to know a little bit more about that but other than that i really enjoy the story if you like political fantasy i would recommend it and i am Definitely looking forward to reading the second book, Flamefall, which, yeah, I'm excited to read it. I'm excited to see where the story goes. I also want to mention this is a pretty dark story. It's just a lot of violence, not just, but um, families die on fire. People get burned a lot. And so just a warning for that because it's very dark in that element. We deal a lot with kind of the grief of, you know, losing your entire family. Uh, because both characters actually went through that. So just putting that warning out there. So yes, that's all I have to say about Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. In the comments down below, leave me a fire emoji. If you made it this far into the video, let me know if you're planning to pick up this book now. Let me know if you want me to do another 24-hour readathon, even though this one was kind of a fail. I have actually done 24-hour readathons before. I just almost never film them because I usually 24 hours is just too short for me to get any meaningful footage so i really tried with this one hopefully it turns out okay but yeah and if you're interested in checking out the book you can click the link in my description box that is not affiliated at all it's just if you want to check out the book subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell all the things youtubers tell you to do again thank you so much for watching i will see you in my next video bye